you knew it was going to be bizarre. Kanye West going to the office to meet the president in the White House. I didn't think it'd get this kind of attention. You can easily make the argument that we shouldn't be focusing on something like this, especially now. But it happened. And you have to ask, why did the president take this time and create this kind of skeptical? Uh, skeptical. Spectacle. I'm skeptical. This was a spectacle. And what is the net positive and negative to come out of this? It is certainly the premise of a good debate. So what do you say? Now we have, I can't believe that this is what we're going to be debating. But you know what? It needs to be. We got Nina Turner and Niger Ennis. Um, I was very surprised that this happened and was handled this way, including by the media. And I'll deal with that later on. That's not on your plate. But Ms. Turner, the idea that Kanye represents the black community and came there to speak truth to power and Trump was meeting with a black leader to deal with black issues. And this shows his connection to the community. Do you accept any of that? No, I mean, certainly was not on display. I mean, listen, Kanye West has a right to his opinion. He has a right to support whoever he wants to support. But, Chris, this is really a lack of judgment, empathy, leadership on, on President Donald Trump in the wake of what is happening with Hurricane Michael, uh, with, you know, hundreds and thousands of people suffering across many states, uh, Georgia, the Carolinas. And then also we're still de dealing with the devastation that happened in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands that barely gets an honorable mention. So while Kanye West does not represent all of the African-American community, certainly we, we are not a monolith, although we're treated like that by many politicians. This was really a very sad day for this country because this president needs his ego stroked every single day. And instead of him taking the time to visit these places, to talk to the same people that you're talking to tonight and have an empathy for our sisters and brothers in need, he is there having a love fest with Kanye West. Mm. You know, there's a right time and a place for everything. And that's certainly what happened today certainly was not the right time. And that was not the right place. Now, Niger, you and I go way back. And so people know, you know what it's like to be raised by a legitimate leader of the black community, your father. Uh, that's not what Kanye West is. Nobody should pretend otherwise. But why was this good for African-Americans or for Trump today? I'm going to answer that. But first, Chris, let me applaud you for what you did in the last segment and even off uh, off air, which is extending your hand to help uh, the hurricane victims. That was really decent and uh, I was quite classy on your part. And I don't get too often an opportunity to say that about you, but but you hit it out of the park there. Niger, if now, I told that... you once, I've told you a hundred times, never break the facade of me being emotionally insensitive <laughs> and callous and calculating. Continue. <laughs> Back to, to Kanye, I think it was an outstanding moment. Look, Nina would be right if I had not heard from Governor Scott, from Senator Marco Rubio. She mentions the Virgin Islands. I've got roots. My father is from St. Croix, Virgin Islands. And the governor and all those politicians have said and leaders have said that the federal government is fully cooperative and is giving a great deal of help uh, to help these uh, these areas and these territories recover. Okay. Look, the Kanye West situation is critically important because there's a rising demographic. We hear in, in November 2018 and 2020 how critical the white suburban uh, female vote is. Mm -hmm. What is often not discussed is the growing and increased popularity among black men for uh, President Donald Trump Basis. and his America first economic policies. And basis. that's what Kanye's meaning represents. Basis. In neon lights. Basis. Niger. Ba basis for that. The black male swing well, vote. Basis. Well, the, the basis is if the Democrat monopoly getting 92 to 95 during the Obama years, maybe as high as 97 percent of the black vote is broken. And there are polls that suggest that mm. the black approval rating for President Trump is anywhere between 20 to as high as 36 percent. Then what you're talking about that? is not just an elect. Oh, well, uh, is that in your Rasmussen? house? Is that in your no. house, Niger? <laughs> no, God, it's, 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 more, it's more like 75% in my house. But, uh, uh, no, but seriously, Chris, there are polls that reflect, even MSNBC came polls. up with a poll denouncing Trump saying that black women only support him, give him approval rating of 15%, which is nothing Kanye West that voted for. Nothing Kanye was about right. the black community. And I, I, I'm sorry, nothing 
Kanye West did today was about the black community. But more importantly, nothing that President Trump did today was about the black community. It was about him and his fragile Nina? ego. Just period. Nina, I mean, let's talk, about, about, talk, let's talk about let's talk about the over incarceration of African American men. Let's and, talk about the homeless Kanye rate. Let's that. talk Nina? about the quality Nina? of jobs in this, in, in this but, country. But, but, so if the president, telling, no, it was a distraction. Hold on, one point, one point at a time. It, it was a distraction, okay. right. Nigel, and you know it was a total distraction to elevate this president and to distract from the fact that he's not dealing with what happened in Florida, what's happening in Georgia, what's ha what happened in Puerto Rico, what happened in the Virgin Islands that disproportionately hurt poor black and brown folks who don't have. Well, That's what he should have been he dealing with. And our poor white sisters and brothers who are struggling in those states hit by Hurricane Michael. We got a Hurricane Trump in this country. Knocking folks out everywhere we go. You want to talk about that Kanye West's presence in the Oval Office today helped black people? That's a that's a damn lie. Just flat it's, out. And well, it's wrong. Well, first of all, Kanye addressed uh, the, the uh, prison uh, cr crisis. He did it a couple of ways. Okay, he talked about ending. He asked the president to end stop and frisk in Chicago to do something about the horrific genocide that has been taking place among black men and brown men in Chicago during the last decade when, before President Trump even came into office. He's talked about doing something about that. And he also talked about the fact that factory jobs, manufacturing jobs, jobs where you don't need five PhDs, but where you can work with your hands and get a, a good pay and a good salary and how that is going to affect black men. He also talked about fathers. And that is an issue that is critical. And Nina, I think you and I don't agree on a lot, but we would agree that there's a crisis of father fatherlessness in the black community, and all those things were addressed. You may not like the vehicle, but the, the issues same, are very real timing, and very serious. The timing, Niger, to do it today, it's one thing that he was at a rally last night during the storm, even though we know what he said about President Obama campaigning after Hurricane right. Sandy, Superstorm Sandy, whatever you want to call it, happened. He was talking about Obama, even though it was days after the storm saying it was wrong. He was there during the storm. And then the day after it, he meets with this cartoonish situation with Kanye West. Yeah, he was bringing up some issues, but he was rambling a lot in between. And certainly there wasn't the cogency there that you would expect to be handled with these kinds of issues. And that's not an insult to Kanye. It's just a reflection of the setup that it was in the day after the storm, Niger. Nobody's That's saying right. that the federal government hasn't put resources in place, but command climate is a term I was taught today by a veteran. The command climate. What is Trump saying by spending his time doing this while people like Judea, the teacher we just had on, are trying to figure out where right. they're going to be tomorrow? Is this and the Chris, best why, use of why, the time? While you're offering help, Chris, the president of the United States could be doing the same thing. And, and what does it mean? To, I mean, you know, and, I, and, and I'm just not in talking about black men like that to talk about. There are black men out there who are there in the fight, taking care of their families. So we're not about to sit up here and stereotype all black men of America. But just putting on a make America great hat on your head and talking about how it makes you feel like a, a, a superhero. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. People are suffering in this country, and the president has the cachet as, as the most powerful man in the free world to do something about that. And he got to sit there and get his ego stroked. It's something wrong with that. And, and let's talk about the Central Park Five, since we want to talk about how much this president is doing for black men and brown men in this country. When he sit up there and convicted in the newspaper, those, those teenage boys that had to go to prison for something they did not do. So, not, no, we, we're over this foolishness with this president. This is not about Kanye. I agree with Van Jones. If he has some issues, we got to deal with that. He does have free speech, and I'm not saying he has issues because he supports President Trump. But let's be real about how he could really use his cachet to help people, him and this president. Nigel, well, you're not saying it, Nina. Yeah, That's you're not saying you. it, Nina, but a lot of folk are saying it because they are terrified at breaking that black monopoly that exists within the Democratic Party because they know that if anywhere close to 20 percent, 
15 percent of the black vote comes out in support of this president, then 2018 and 2020 will be but red su- waves. But supporting them for what? I mean, I'm terrified of people jobs, just blindly, economy, blindly, blindly, entrepreneurship, economy, manufacturing jobs, People's an America wages first are stagnant, economic stagnant. policy that puts America. first. We got a president first. that did tax cuts. Uh, Kanye, look, that again, going to Kanye, Kanye said, the I'm sick of factory jobs on the going of the to poor. China. Right, I want them to come to America we'll, we'll and to our ghettos. We'll pick it up. We will. We will. We'll meet again on this, Nigel. Oh, 100%. Trust that and I'm looking forward to 100%, it. 100%. Let's but, Nigel, it again. I'll just tell you this. You make good points. But every time the context of a point you want to make is Kanye said dot, 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 automatically you're losing some points about <laughs> the context <laughs> of the conviction that you're bringing. But seriously, Nigel, I appreciate you here every time. Ms. Turner, always a pleasure. Thank you for being here. Thank, Thank you. All right. The Trump administration has a growing diplomatic crisis on its hands. The world closely watching how the president is responding or not responding to the disappearance of a Saudi journalist that is feared murdered by the hand of the Saudi royal kingdom. The question is, did a prince embraced by the president and his son-in-law order a hit? This is complex. I'm going to lay it out to you in terms of the plus minus of going after Saudi Arabia for this. Next. Next.